Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a weapon chat. Um, before I get into it, if you guys can't tell from the black and white canvas that I have here, this is a mystery kit. I'm only working, I'm only showing this small area. Um, this is the mystery kit from Ivy Dolamore from Diamond Art Club. If you have zero desire in, um, Seeing any of it, I'll keep my hands on it right now until I start working so you can get yourself situated and a chance for you to get uh, all the stuff that you need to work alongside with me. And um, and then we'll get into it. If you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and other crafting related content. I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard that hot mess express. Let's be friends. If you've been here before, hi, welcome. Um, if you guys would like to see the unboxing for this, and I am going to preface it by saying this does contain spoilers. Um, I will link that up in the eye for you guys. So, I uh, hope that you guys all took that time that you needed. I'm going to peel back the plastic cover and I'm going to crack into this kit. I am very excited. I have never done a mystery kit from Diamond Art Club. However, I have done a previous mystery kit from, I don't even remember what company, but another company. But, if you don't know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress. Um, which, in this case, is the... Fantasy mystery kit from Diamond Art Club. Um, and you can pull out whatever it is that you are working on. It could be a house project. It could be a craft project. It could be... I have people tell me they listen while they're working, while they're driving, while they're doing household chores. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, go for it. There is no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. Oh, look at these drills, you guys. Look at that sparkle. Um, as you guys can hear, my daughter is very much awake. Um, also, it is... When I say it is, like, insanely hot in our craft space... Uh, it is insanely hot in our craft space. So, you may hear the fan a little bit louder than normal because, you know, try and tolerate that. We actually ordered another, like, box fan for our craft space. If you guys didn't know, my husband and I share a craft space here. And, um, oh, just dropped the monitor. And, um, it's hot. It's, it's hot, you guys. So, all right, here we go. First drills. Woo! You know, I was debating whether I wanted to work on this kit and something else, like, simultaneously. But I opted to just do this kit. Um, at least for now. Like, this is literally the first drills that I've laid down on this canvas. So, you know, thoughts and opinions may change. But I'm going to do my best. Um, if you guys didn't watch my unboxing because you don't want any spoiler alerts or it wasn't of interest to you. Um, whatever I post on my Instagram will have a slide. Um, I can actually put it here on the screen if you guys want to see what it looks like. But it basically says, like, caution. Spoilers ahead. Tells you what the canvas is. Um, I mentioned this in that video. Ooh, whoops. All right. I might have to zoom you guys out a little bit. Let's try that again. Just hit you right with my, my pen. Um, I mentioned this on my post on Instagram as well. But if you are seeing a post that has multiple photos, it doesn't have to be a mystery kit, it can be literally anything, and you don't like that photo, like physically like double tap and like it, um, it will come back into your feed because the algorithm is saying, well, you clearly need to see this and it's going to keep bringing it back up. So just a friendly little reminder, it doesn't have to be just for mystery paintings, but in general, if there's something that you see in your feed and you're like, oh, um, I don't want to see, <laughs> I don't want to say I don't want to see it again. It's a way to tell the algorithm that, hey, you don't need to show me this exact post again. Um, because I had that happen on a totally non-mystery uh, kit photo. I kept saying, why is the same post keep coming up in my feed? And I realized that every time it was coming back, and it could be hours later, days later, whatever, it was scrolling to the next photo. And it was basically going through all that. And it was like seven photos. And I was like, damn. So I realized that I liked it. And that exact post never came back into my feed. So if you are trying to keep your eyeballs clear of a mystery photo or something similar, um, just a heads up on that. So I hope that you guys are doing well. It is, like I said, it is very, very hot here. I can't tell... If these squares seem bigger than the squares on the canvas, or if I'm just having a really tough time gauging where I'm putting them, which is also plausible. I also have 
like sticky residue on my finger. I had a band-aid on. Um, I nicked my finger with my fingernail because I'm cool like that. And I took the band-aid off before I started filming and now my finger has more residue on it than I realized. So I hope that you guys are all doing well. Sorry for the really long rambles. But if you've been here before, you know, what's new? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for anyone who is curious, I know I had mentioned that I was feeling a little under the weather because I've been dealing with some, like, fun allergy. I'm going to switch to a different pen. Um, and as always, if you guys ever are curious of, like, what pens I'm using, just leave me a comment and I'll let you know. Um, I'm trying to see which ones have wax in them because I don't want to refill my pens. Do you guys refill your pens before you start a new canvas or you just go until your pen's like, hey, you need more wax? Because I am definitely of the, I just refill them as needed, but all my pens always seem to wear out at the same time. Um, anyway, so I am feeling much better. However, all of the allergy congestion has since shifted and turned into this lovely dry cough. And um, that cough kept me up last night for hours. I got four hours of sleep last night, so... I'm also dragging a bit because I'm tired. So let me tell you guys about my week. Uh, and then uh, I have some questions for you. And let me know down below. So I know if you watched last week's Whip and Chat, uh, this might sound like deja vu. And if you didn't and you'd like to, I will link that one for you guys up in the eye. Um, last Sunday. Is that drill not the right? Where do my tweezers go? What are you looking at? Listen, I should have gotten all this stuff together before I sat down to record, but alas, I didn't. And now, there's like half a drill and I can't get it off my... It doesn't look very small. Hold up. Hold up, folks. I am... definitely struggling over here. What is up with this drill? Okay, I'm just gonna move on, because nobody wants to hear me pissing and moaning about a drill that... You guys probably don't even care. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. But, um, whew, anyway, last week, last Sunday, I went to another food truck rally. Um, this one was much smaller, and it was to support the fire station, the fire department. Um, so we took Briar. We had some really good food. She had donuts. I had barbecue. I had this really delicious pork barbecue sandwich with a beet barbecue sauce and now I'm like do I like beets my whole life I've thought I don't like beets but now I'm like do I like them I don't know that was delicious my husband got a couple of different goodies than what we got it's nice because then you can all take a bite from each other and see what you like what you don't like um and they had inflatables so Briar got to jump and she was really really excited and then it started raining and so they were like taking down the inflatables while the kids were not while they were still in them they were basically like all the kids were in one and so they just kind of deflated all the other ones and briar had a really hard time because she didn't want to be done jumping which i mean makes sense i wouldn't want to be done jumping either if i was chilling on some inflatables and i was four years old but alas like any good parent we hurried her out of there because we could see what was happening and um i've been thinking about getting one for our yard on I know other people have gotten them and like it offers hours and hours of entertainment. If you guys have or have ever had an inflatable in your yard or you have a neighbor that did it or anything like that, let me know. Let me know down below. Um, it is a little daunting because I feel like I'm looking for a symbol. This symbol has two dots and then I'm like, oh, it's over here. And then I'm like, no, that's a single dot. But those are double dots. This takes a little bit more concentration than a regular canvas, in case anyone was curious. Um, because it does require a little bit more, like, symbol recognition than going off of, like, oh, light spots, dark spots, you know. Um, that's my initial reaction. I feel like I am moving in slow motion, though, in this whip and chat. Um, so I hope you guys... hope I'm not... I feel monotone. Is that... Is that right? Do I feel monotone? Yeah, I do feel monotone. Do I sound monotone? I don't know. Editing Lindsay will probably let me know. I'm sure somebody else will let me know, but 
Anyway, that was a really good day. We had a really good time. Um, the worst was when we left. So they had this parking lot where we could park. And that's where we parked. Okay, I am. I don't know. I'm just doing, like, the whole art of diamond painting wrong today. But I am off on these drills. And it has to be user error. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be, but it's more than likely user error. Um, so my husband is getting everything situated. We changed Briar. Well, she went to the bathroom. We have a little portable potty in the back of the car. She went to the bathroom. We got her in the car, and then my husband and I could not, for the life of us, find the car keys anywhere. Anywhere at all. Um, so that was really daunting. Are these two different symbols? They sure are. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, I hope that you guys are hanging in there with me today because I am definitely struggling more than normal. Um, but that's a me problem, not a you problem. So, anyway. Um, what do I want to do next? Let's, let's go to the arrow. All these are dark colors. Currently, uh, you know, I put one color down, I grabbed a second color. But we ended up finding them. It took a while, but while we were walking to the car, there were these two kids. I would guess one was like a preteen and the other was a teenager. And they were literally just screaming in the parking lot, cursing at each other. Parents standing by doing absolutely nothing. And I'm like, uh, they see us walking by with a small child. Like, maybe that's the time to tell your kids to knock it off. But not my monkey, not my circus. Um, but eventually the parents said something. And I was like, how would you let it get to that? I don't know. I don't know. I only have one kid, so I guess I can't fully relate to that. Did that have a symbol? Excuse me. Let me get some water real quick. Ah, so I am doing my best to try and not, you know, cough in everybody's ears and take lots and lots of water breaks. But um, between the heat, which is making it harder for me to breathe because the dry heat um, and talking, I imagine I'm going to need a few water breaks. My husband and I actually ordered um, a box fan today. We have a Walmart delivery order coming today. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to add this because we have a box fan in our room that my husband sleeps with year round, no matter what. Um, he likes the sound. It circulates the air. But we have brought one up here to the top of our stairs to help circulate the air. If you guys didn't know, our craft space is on the third floor. So naturally, it is significantly hotter up here than it is anywhere else in the house. It's also not well uh, laid out. There's one air conditioning vent and it's like right by my husband's feet. But it's not in a spot that even if my husband wasn't over there, that it would be a centralized location. Um, I'm not sure why they don't have different configuration, but I'm, I'm not a builder. I'm not a designer. I'm not any of that stuff. Um, but we will get one and we would put it at the bottom or at the top of the stairs just to help move the air. And when I tell you guys, like, when we walk down our stairs to go down to, like, the second floor, you get a couple stairs down, and all of a sudden, it's like you're in a different climate. It is so much cooler, uh, and with days like this, like, I can't handle being up here when it's this hot. And it's only May, which is weird, because it was not very warm not that long ago. The weather here has been crazy. What about you guys? How's your weather been? Let me know down below. Um, so Monday... I had emailed our OT, uh, like, late Sunday night and let her know. Because we get asked the COVID questions. Do you have any COVID symptoms? All that stuff. And while I know that this is allergy turned into whatever yuckiness this has turned into, um, I still didn't want her coming into the house and all that stuff. So I sent her an email and I let her know, like, hey, let's reschedule, um, which is interesting because this was a rescheduled appointment because she wasn't feeling well the week before. Oh, these are <coughs> so snug in the way that they were rendered. Um, so I feel like I'm having trouble maneuvering here. I guess these are the uh, Diamond Art Club new square drills. I haven't worked on a newer Diamond Art Club in a while, I don't think. I can't even remember the last time in art club I did in general. Anyway, tangent. Um, so I emailed her late Sunday night and said, you know, let's reschedule. 
excuse me. So Monday morning comes around and I've got no response from her. And I'm like, well, this sucks. So I wasn't sure if she was going to show up or what. Um, and I know that everybody, like life is busy. I get that. But if one of your students is canceling on you, it, it literally takes three seconds to open up that email and just type, okay, or got it or whatever. Um, because I was then preparing my daughter on the chance that her occupational therapist could show up, even though, um, I am really having a difficult time with these drills. I don't know. Maybe I'll go down to a smaller pen. The stickiness is now shifting from one finger to another. All right, let's grab you. Um, God, I feel like I'm just rambling along in this video. I hope that you guys are enjoying it. I mean, I usually ramble, but this is making me feel like I can't work with a multiplacer because they're so tight together. I'm also one of those people, I don't really care if there's like minor gapping because nobody's going to look at it on my wall and be like, mm, you know, you should have, you should have lined them up nicer. You, you should have made them look better. And in all honesty, like, I don't, have, I don't have a single diamond painting hanging up in my house. Um, which I know is, like, blasphemy to some people, but it is what it is. So, uh, where am I? <coughs> Excuse me. But we took that and we used it as just, like, a lounge day. I finally got to film the whip and chat, because last week's whip and chat went up late because I was feeling under the weather. I, I need to, like, put some pep in my step here. Am I boring you guys today? <laughs> <sighs> These are very, uh, for people who like the very tight fitting squares, this is for you. But I feel like there's no room for error when they are supposed to be that tight together. But, I mean, I'm not complaining about the quality or anything like that. I'm just saying I need a little bit of buffering here, a little bit of space. But, um... That night, let me see, where am I? I? I was just so worried. I really was. Because I was like, watch, she is going to just show up. I'm not going to be prepared for her. Our house is a mess. I'm not feeling well, you know, but thankfully she didn't. Um, but I took it to Instagram and 100% uh, of you that voted thought she was going to show up unannounced. So there's that. Um... I, uh, where am I? I've got notes over here. Oh, oh my God. So I like tweaked something on my neck. I'm going to tell you guys, like, I thought maybe I had pinched a nerve. I had this weird pain in between my shoulder blades, up through my shoulder, down my arm, all in my neck. And it was horrible, horrible. So I go to lay down on Monday night and I literally like screamed for help for my husband because I could not lay down. Anytime, like, my body got in, like, a leaning position, I was like, no, 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 no. Like, I could just feel like I was going to get stuck or I did get stuck. And the pain was excruciating. And I um, just cried to my husband because I was like, I'm never going to be able to lie down. And it took a really, really long time. My husband ended up making this, like, pillow fort around me. Um, I had... A pillow under one part of my side, but not the whole thing because it would have pushed me up at an angle that was uncomfortable and painful. And then there was a pillow like between my legs, one by my back, to the point that my husband pulled out a mattress from the guest room bedroom and put it on the floor so that he could sleep. Because um, he's like, I can't get into the bed with you. Like, I don't want to, you know, touch, bump into you and you be in pain. And I was... Like, of course, so upset because I was like, I don't want you to sleep on the floor. But he was really helpful. Um, I don't know if he felt like he was helpful in the moment or not, but he was very helpful. And, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm doing a really poor job of uh, not coughing in your ear. I do apologize. I am. Finding this difficult to multitask the same way I do on like a regular diamond painting because you realize how reliant on the colors and the shading and stuff until it's not there. Um, and by the way, I have zero idea what this is. It's all just dark drills right now. Um, but I 
was able to, um, I love Briar Watch, a bunch of gummy bears on TV, like the TV show, not like the candy. I got to video chat with Knox and we hung out. Um, but it was just, it was, it was a really, really hard day. I think I have a photo of the pillow fort. If I do, I'll throw that in here. Um, if not, then I just pointed at my screen. The next day was Tuesday. My neck was still not feeling any better in the morning. So I had my husband take Briar to ice skating without me. Uh, the one thing that's really nice is if he has to take her alone, her coach can help with the ice skates to make sure that they are on tightly and all that stuff. Um, and I even asked him, he's like, yeah, she helped with the skates. Um, but he said she did a really good job. There are a lot of kids there. I apologize. I thought I pulled the camera up a lot enough, but I feel like I keep hitting it. Um, I didn't want to pull the camera out too much. Because I'm trying to keep, like, focused in on this small area so that anyone who doesn't want to see the mystery doesn't have to. But, in all honesty, how many people actually watching the, uh, diamond painting that's happening? Um, I mean, I know for me, like, I look up from time to time, but I'm not watching. And if it gets to a point where I think it's giving away too much, like, I would probably switch to a different canvas for... Um, my weapon chats. All right, I am. I know I'm always like the conductor of the Hot Mess Express, but you guys, I feel like I am like taking the struggle bus to the Hot Mess Express today. I'm just all over the place. But Briar, uh, Brian told me that Briar was doing really, really well, especially like going backwards. She kind of lead, led the pack that day, so you know it's always good to hear your baby is thriving, even if you're not there to see it. Um, let's see, I'm gonna lift you guys up a little bit more. I don't know if that helped at all. We'll find out. We'll find out when I hit the camera for the 17th time. Um, it's funny. I always watch other people on their weapon chats. And they'll like hit a camera and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I'm always like, you guys don't have to apologize. It's totally fine. Nobody cares. And here I am apologizing again and again for the same thing. Um, anyway, so he took her to Five Guys. They had burgers together. She has informed me that the perfect hamburger... Uh, is a cheeseburger with pickles. I am not a burger person. Um, and I do like Five Guys. I find them to be very expensive for what they are. But I get their hot dogs. The problem is the last couple times I've eaten their hot dogs, it just did not settle well. Um, which is a shame because, you know, that's what they sell. Hot dogs and hamburgers. And yes, I know in case anyone's like, but they also sell a BLT. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I've had it. I think there's also a grilled cheese, but it's literally just cheese melted on a bun. So it's not really a grilled cheese. But anyway, oh my gosh, I'm just rambling all over the place. Um, but we got to um, play outside after she came home. The best part of the day was when she came home with Brian. And I was sitting downstairs on the couch. And she came in and she, mommy, mommy. And she was so excited to see me. She just came like running over to me and gave me the biggest hug. And I was like, okay, this is what I've been waiting for. Um, like... This, you know, I never had that moment with her in terms of like, oh, when I came home from work, because I have been a stay-at-home parent her entire life. I, I worked three whole shifts after my kiddo was born, and due to um, health stuff with her, it just, it wasn't feasible for me to continue working, so I never had that, and um, it was really great to have her come home and be so excited to see mommy, which... You know, I imagine my husband felt like that when he was still working at his job. What is this? What just came off of my canvas? I just put my hand right up under the camera, not even with the thing in it. So for anyone who just looked up and they were like, what is that alien life form? It was just my hand. Um, but we went outside. Um, I was feeling significantly better by then. I got to rest. Um, and my body got to recharge. I got to take, a, you know, a nice hot shower with the water beaming on my neck to help break down some of the pain. And I got to rest with a heating pad and a massage. I got like a massage. I don't know what you call it. Massager. Um, but not have to feel like I was rushed because, you know, they were out of the house. So I got to go outside with her afterwards. It was a nice day. Um, we played. Um, the, the neighbor's dog was wearing like a romper. I have never seen anything like it. Like it was literally like arms and legs and a vest. Um, and I don't know. I think it was the, the daughter 
but she was literally like, no, stop barking, no. And I was like, well, you guys are doing a really great job of disciplining this dog that barks a million hours a day. However, I think that they are rotating the dogs around, so they're not all three of them there all together all the time. Because the barking hasn't been to the extent that it was, but also I don't hear... <laughs> Like, the zoomies happening the same way that I did before. Because um, before you could hear multiple dogs, like, running around, crashing into each other, balls being knocked over, all that fun stuff. Um, but we ended up, uh, I took Briar with me to vote. Um, I exercised my civic duty. She got a sticker, and they were like, these are the only stickers we have left. And I was like, if there's not a sticker left for me when we get through. Um, for some reason, they didn't offer me an electronic ticket. Uh, so I had to fill in the little bubbles while my daughter was like, what are you doing? And I couldn't explain, I could explain to an extent, but like, I didn't, I didn't want her to think that like she could just color on it. So I was trying to do it quickly. Um, and then she got to help me put it in the machine and, you know, see the thing that says your vote was counted. Um, which, yay. Uh, and then after we voted, we went to go, um, to dinner and then we went to a quick little trip to Target. We needed to get loofahs. So Briar's at that point now where she wants to like independently wash her body and her hair and all these things. But um, I'm not a washcloth person. I know some people are like very much washcloth people. But I feel like, especially with a little kid, you put soap in it and it like sucks all of the soap. Which, whatever, that's fine. But Briar has this crazy expensive body wash because it's free of everything. Her shampoo, body wash, and conditioner I got in a three-pack, and it was $36 for a little kid. You know what I mean? Like, it's different if you're an adult buying fancy <laughs> salon products, but I, I'm not buying salon products for myself. I'm buying this stuff for her that was recommended by her dermatologist. Um, you know, so she doesn't get, like, the, the bubblegum smelling stuff like that. But then we went and got... So we got our loofah. We got our navy cream, as she calls it. Um, and we were looking for Sabra hummus. Uh, has anybody actually seen Sabra brand hummus in their markets recently? Because it has been probably a couple months now since my husband has seen it in stores. And not all hummus companies are created equal. And I'm just curious if you guys are getting it in your markets yet. Um, because maybe that'll be an indication that like it'll be coming soon to us again. I don't know. I'm, I'm just talking to my butt here. Um, but yeah, we did a quick little target trip and then we are, I don't know, halfway home and Briar realizes that she left her Pinkie Pie, which is a My Little Pony, at the restaurant and freaked out. I need it now. And I was like, girlfriend, it is already your bedtime. Um, we are not driving back into Harrisburg to go get you your Pinkie Pie. Mommy will take you tomorrow to go get it. No, I want it now. So she was freaking out, crying, just sobbing in the car. And like, you could see she was just very sad very sad about it which you know i can understand that's the toy of the moment um and uh it gave me a really good opportunity to have a mommy and me day the next day and that then in turn gave brian a couple hours of uninterrupted work time so on wednesday i took her to color me mine um i don't know if you guys have one of them near where you live it's a chain, um, and it's where you pick your own pottery, and then you paint it, and then they fire it in the kiln, and you come back and get it however many days later. So, I've done it with her before, and they get you, because they're, they're like, oh, it's only an $8 studio fee, and you're like, oh, great. But then you go, and you pick out the pottery, and you're like, oh, this piggy bank is $47. <laughs> or, like, you know. So, she picked out this T-Rex. Um, we... As of the time of this filming, we have not gotten a call yet that it is um, ready. I think that they said it takes like a week to 10 days. Um, just depends on how many they have before us. But it was funny because I was like, you know what? I'll do one too. So she did a T-Rex and I am working on a mug. Oddly enough, the last time we went, I also worked on a mug. Um, I like to drink coffee, so I'm not surprised that I got a mug. But I felt so uninspired. Like I sat down and I put paint on it and I was like huh, what am I going to do next? And so I spent all this money to basically put like two colors on a mug. We'll see. Hopefully it comes out nice, but <coughs> excuse
excuse me. Um, I just had really bad like creativity block, you know? Anyway, we spent, we spent like two hours there. It was a really long time. So after that, we went back to mission to go pick up her, my little pony. And if you guys have never been to mission barbecue, um, every day at 12 noon, they do the national anthem. They, they halt service and they have, I mean, they have flags all over the restaurant, but they have a flag hanging on the TV. Like it, it's on the actual TV screen and not like portrayed or hanging from the actual television set, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, and she, for some reason, that's probably where she got her love of American flags all of a sudden. Um, and it's very weird. Like we'll be driving down the street. She's like, oh my God, mommy, look, an American flag. And I'm like, yeah, girlfriend. Um, but she likes when they do that. And so it was exciting for her that we were there at that time. And, um, you know, we were just going to pick up the My Little Pony. We weren't going to have lunch there because we just had dinner there the night before. Which is funny because she did ask us like, the other day, can we go back and get barbecue? And I was like, girl, we were there like two days ago. We've been there twice this week. I mean, once to eat and once to pick it up. Anyway, so I ended up taking her to get hibachi. And she recently discovered her love of California rolls. So I said, did you want any other sushi or do you want to just have that one roll? Um, this particular place has usually has deals if you buy more than one roll. Um, so we ended up getting two sushi rolls. I got two basic rolls because the big ones, she struggles with the size of them. Um, she struggles with the size of like a basic roll too because she'll try to take a bite. And you're supposed to not like bite it in half and put it down because everything will fall out. But she doesn't understand that because she's four. But she also has a tiny mouth because she's four, you know. Um, but she ended up eating almost both of those sushi rolls. Um, I only had a couple pieces and I was very, very impressed. But then when lunch came around, she didn't take a single bite of lunch. And I was like, well, I can't be mad because, you know, she housed all that, <laughs> all that sushi. Um... But now I know for next time, it's one or the other. It's not both. It is not both, friend. We are not doing both. But it, it was really funny because we were sitting with another... I assume they were a couple from the way they interacted. Um, and they got a kick out of Briar. And then um, we went home. And it was just a really lovely afternoon. And then that evening, we had a t-ball game. Now listen. When I signed Briar up for t-ball, I had no idea... That there was going to be any Wednesday night anything. It's 45 minutes from our house at 6 o'clock. Which means unless I want my kid to eat dinner at like 4 o'clock. Um, it's not very conducive for anything helpful. You know, uh, the kids who live locally, they can eat dinner at 5.30 and still be at the field before 6. Uh, we don't have the luxury. So... We actually, my husband dropped off a pop to uh, a local order he had done, um, and we just picked up a bunch of snacks from Sheets, which is a gas station with made-to-order food and, and convenient stuff, and um, just ate a bunch of snacks, because we were like, we know it's not going to be a real good meal kind of day, and I had one of those, did you guys know Uncrustables makes turkey and cheese pinwheels, but they take twice as long to defrost as the regular ones. Um, but we brought those with us so that she had something to eat after her game. But if I never have to do another Wednesday night sporting event for my daughter, I would not be sad about it. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that was the last one of these games. We play against, like, a different league, and <coughs> um, but this other, whatever teams we're playing on Wednesday is a different organization, but it's local to the same one that we play for, so that's why we play them, I think. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I honestly don't really care that much, but they decided all of a sudden now, because the other teams were doing it, that we were going to start slow pitching to our kids which we have mixed feelings about. Um, you know, there there's probably a couple kids on our team who could benefit from that, but overall, it just makes a kid feel worse when they're here to learn the fundamentals of the sport and you're slow pitching to them and they can't hit it and after like 10 balls, you pull out a tee and then they have to hit it off the tee and then some of them were still missing the ball off the tee. So it was just, 
It was a mess. But then they were like, well, everybody now has to wear a batting helmet, no matter what. And I was like, cool. Uh, if you guys did not know, my daughter is incredibly tiny. She is by far the smallest and the youngest on her team. Um, and so the equipment that is provided is too big for my daughter. So fast forward to the next day, we decided let's go to Dick's Sporting Goods and we will pick out a batting helmet. Um, there's a really good chance that my daughter won't be playing t-ball next year unless she decides she really wants to. Uh, so we may have just purchased a helmet that literally will be worn like two days. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'd rather it only be worn for two days than to deal with the helmet that's provided. When I tell you guys the helmet is so big on her that they have it, she can't see. It hangs below her eyes. And so then she's trying to run without tripping. And, well, she's already a little bit clumsy. So we went to Dick's. We got her um, a batting helmet. And we picked up a pair of baseball pants that were in a youth extra extra small, which is still like two sizes too big for her. But it helps her look more official and <coughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, you guys. I know I said I'm going to try not to like cough in your ear, but I feel like that's all I've been doing. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot tell that I have three different colors down on my canvas right now. Um, and I just put way too many, I put way too many drills in my tray. But we went and got her batting helmet. We got the baseball pants and she saw all these mannequins and she said to Brian, look, daddy, it's people with no heads, um, which he found hilarious and really endearing. Um, I didn't hear her actually saying it. I only heard him repeating it. And I was like, oh, that is cute. Um, and we ended up at Buffalo Wild Wings for lunch, which... Buffalo Wild Wings. I have a bone to pick with you. Why? Why did you take the buffalo shrimp off your menu? I know it's been probably a couple years, but not everybody likes chicken. And I loved being able to get some shrimp, and then have it be in the same wing flavors that you guys offered. Just going to put that out there. Anyway, so we did that, and then she wanted to walk around the mall, but, like, this is literally the worst mall ever. Oddly enough, it's the mall that my husband and I met each other at um, a very long time ago, decades ago. <laughs> and uh, if anyone didn't know, my husband worked at Hot Topic, and that's where I met him. <laughs> my daughter is singing Let It Go, if you guys can hear her in the background. Um, oh man, actually, I think I'm going to pause here real quick to get a drink. Oh, so anyway, the mall is terrible, but while we were at Dick's Sporting Goods, um, we had walked over, I know I talked about this in one of my other weapon chats, that my daughter all of a sudden is expressing interest in wanting to ride a bike again. We have a balance bike that she is, she doesn't really understand it, and we've had it so long that she's outgrown it, um... So while we were at Dick's, we took her over to the bike section just so we could get a feel of what size is truly right for her. Of course, she is right at the cusp between like two different sizes. So we put her on one and then she threw this massive tantrum, which I mean, it was to be expected, honestly, that we put her on a bike and then told her she couldn't have that bike. Um, but it was for purposes of us finding her a bike that she could have. But don't tell her that. She did not understand that concept at all. So, um, where are we at here? We, yeah, it was weird. She's, like, right on the cusp of, like, the 12-inch bikes being too small and the 16-inch bikes being too big. And nobody seems to carry a 14-inch bike. But we decided after her nap we were going to um, get her a bike. So, first we did, we had made Ublek, which if you guys don't know what Ublek is... It is a combination of cornstarch and water. And if you do it at the right proportions, it's a non-Newtonium solid or non-Newtonium liquid. I don't know which one they refer to it as. But it is neither a liquid nor a solid. It's very fun to play in. But um, we used a lot of cornstarch, which, I mean, I bought cheap cornstarch from the market for it on purpose. Um, then after that, we took her to Walmart. Now, she found a bike, hopped on the bike. It was a bike with training wheels. This was my debate. Do I buy her another balance bike and hope that it clicks? And then we can go right to like a big girl bike. Or do we just get her one with training wheels? And then once she understands that, 
take the training wheels off. Well, we opted to go with the training wheels. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I know, like, the science says that these balance bikes are great, but I just can't get my kid to understand it. And then she gets more frustrated, and I'm like, all right, I don't want to spend a lot of money on something that's going to sit in my garage the way the last one did. Um, but she's definitely now expressing that she wants to ride a bike. So we took her to the bike section, and she hopped on this little Minnie Mouse one first, which was a 12-inch one. You know, it had all the bells and whistles, like literally had the bell and the basket and the streamers and the flashing lights on. The, and I was like, I'm not buying her this bike. You know, we're just doing it for size. Then we put her on uh, the 16-inch bike, which this particular 16-inch bike was from Frozen. And it had one of those little bike seats for your doll in the back. And Briar, I don't know how many times she asked, but she kept saying to us, is that where I sit? No, Briar, why would that be where you sit? You would sit on the seat of the, the bike. Really, Mommy? Yes, Briar. So finally, she's starting to get the hang of it, and she's going back and forth. But we didn't want to buy her that bike because it was like almost twice as much as the one that I had seen online. So my husband found the ticket for the one that we saw online. That was like a $60 bike. And... Um, he's like, well, I'm going to take this to customer service and see if they can grab this particular one off the shelf. It probably won't be assembled. I'm like, all right, cool. <coughs> In the meantime, I'm with the shopping cart and the baby, and she doesn't understand that not every aisle is wide enough for her to ride down in a bicycle and me ride, walk next to her with the shopping cart. So I'm before her or in front of her. And then she's doing these side aisles, which, like, barely have enough room for a shopping cart, let alone the both of us. And she just does not understand, like, you have to, like, control, like, the handlebars, stop looking down, all these things. So my husband comes back. He gets the bike. Big letters on the front. It says, no tools required. Then on the side of the bike, it also says, tools required. And there's, like, 15 photos, 15 different tools listed this size Allen wrench, this size Allen wrench, a screwdriver, a, a wrench, a, a pliers. And he's like, so do I need tools or do I not need tools? Now, I don't know about you guys, but we can never find an Allen wrench when we need one. So we bought an Allen wrench like set. And, um, <coughs> oh, guys, it is very, very dry up here. <clears throat> and I have, um, you guys probably haven't noticed it, but I've paused the video probably a dozen times. Maybe I've noticed it. Just to get some water, so I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, much better. So, we ended up getting the bike. And he took it home. And turns out, we'll find out, he found out the next morning when he put it together, that indeed, no tools were required. So now we have an Allen wrench set that, you know, we need anyway, because we never have the right size ones. I don't understand why they're not universal. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, but anyway, the next day we had her head teacher and her head teacher is pregnant and is having a little bit more difficulty like sitting on the floor in our house, which is fine. But our kitchen table isn't really like a conducive spot for her to sit and do lessons with because like we put Briar in her high chair for things like we, when we do activities with her, but it's harder for her to interact with her teacher like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So while oh my God, I have hit the camera a hundred times today. <laughs> While I'm having the lesson with Briar outside, Brian is now assembling the new bike and found out we don't actually need any tools, um, which was, you know, helpful to know after the fact. But he's like, I was like, watch, if you don't buy any of the replacement, like, if we don't have the right Allen wrench, we're going to need what we didn't buy, you know? So, um, why do these now look like they're totally off? I am having a very hard time with this canvas. Again, I'm sure this is just user error, but I've got spots where they're so tight I can't even get my pen in, and other spots where they seem to be spreading like wildfire. And I can't tell if it's the white of the canvas or, like, the glow of the uh, light pad underneath. <sighs> anyway, I hope that this is a... Uh, I hope that this whipping chat doesn't totally suck. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm entitled to have a couple off days here and there, but like, oh my God, Lindsay, you are, you are struggling more than normal. Excuse me. So anyway, um, but her head teacher let us know she didn't have anyone to pair us with for the summer program, which sucks because like, let's say they have another kid 
who has similar goals as Briar, but is three. They're not going to pair a three-year-old with an almost five-year-old because their language skills are, are expectedly going to be in different places. And she let us know that, unfortunately, um, the only kids... She's got one kid who's going into kindergarten in the fall. So this is her last little bit before she uh, ages out of the IU program. And she is one of the original OT that we fired, one of her students. And so we would be there with that OT, even though the OT wouldn't be instructing Briar. <coughs> Excuse me. If you guys have been around long enough, you probably remember the story of the OT. Um, but if you weren't, super quick crash course on this. When we first started with the IU, we were assigned the occupational therapist for our, our region, our um, school district, and everything was virtual, and she just constantly sat there criticizing my daughter, criticizing us, and I was like, look, if I'm doing something wrong, it's because I'm only a parent. I'm not a trained occupational therapy. I don't know how to do these things, and you criticizing my three-year-old and making her feel bad um, is making me upset, and I don't know how to do what it is you're trying to have me do. Uh, apparently, I was doing hand over hand wrong. I was showing her how to use the scissors wrong. I was doing something wrong with the markers. Briar was doing something wrong with the markers. She was shocked at her inability to use scissors. I was like, lady? So then, fast forward to I had let my head teacher know, like, look, I, I can't do this with this OT anymore. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, we tried to give her a couple chances, but um, when your three-year-old's entire body language just shifts the second she sees this woman on the computer screen, you know it's not a good fit. I knew it wasn't a good fit, but I was being told I didn't have any other options. Um, thankfully, we were able to see a different OT virtually, who they said when we go back in person, we won't be able to keep, but she was like, I'll stay. Um, and she actually probably shouldn't be with us because she is not assigned to our school district, but she doesn't care. So we can be paired with a kid that belongs to that OT and our head teacher. It just sucks that like, I'm going to have to deal with that OT again. But then she emailed me later in the day and she actually found another kid who at the time, the, their sisters or twins, I think she said, I think they are twins. I think they're sisters as opposed to boy, girl, um, that, um, have decided they'd like to do the summer program. So they seem like a better fit and we don't have to worry about the OT. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. We picked up my mother-in-law and we took her and the new bike to the park. Um, and this is really the first time Briar got to ride like her own bike and she was doing pretty good. She needs to stop looking down. Um, that's like a huge thing. And then one of the other things that we're dealing with is the fact that she, like, I'll tell her, like, you have to control your bike. You have to control your bike. Turn your bike. Turn your bike. Turn your bike. And she's not. And then she crashes. And it's like, well. But she picked up on it. She did really well. She played on the playground. We had pizza. Um, but this kid just does not listen. Like, it started raining. And she went directly into a puddle after we told her, do not. Do not touch it. Do not jump in it. She's, like, jumping up and down in it. And she's like, see? And it's like, well, yeah, I do see. But I asked you not to do that. And... <coughs> You know, I remember, like, before I had kids, like, I couldn't, I would never let my kid talk to me that way. My kid will never be like, fast forward, uh, I have a kid who, like, does not listen at all. Like, I, nothing I say matters. And she doesn't care if things get taken away from her, which makes it very frustrating because if she has a punishment, she's just like, whatever. Um, so that's really fun. But um, my mother-in-law, I love her dearly. Uh, she does not like it when we get frustrated with Briar. Yet, um, one time she, I don't want to say she tried to discipline Briar, but one time she tried to tell Briar to not do something, um, because it really disappointed her. And I was like, yeah, no, we're not going with the, I'm not upset I'm disappointed route, because that's why you have my generation of people who are people pleasers and all these other things, because they were told their whole lives that what they're doing their feelings weren't valid, and it's their job to cater to the adult, and I don't want my daughter like that. Um, okay, anyway, so, Saturday, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Saturday, and then I'm gonna get out of here. Um, Saturday was T-ball. Uh, our head coach was 
not there because he wanted to see his daughter play soccer, which, like, go for it, dude, you know, you've got more than one kid, we get it, um, but it was just Brian and the other assistant coach, and, like, these kids, like, it was hot, you guys, they did not want to participate, the one kid kept, like, going back into the dugout, Briar did not want to listen, she wanted to wear her batting helmet the whole time, I was like, Briar, you can't wear your batting helmet out in the field, uh, excuse me, and then she didn't want to play in the outfield, she only wanted to to bat, but she didn't want to bat when her team was at bat, so it was like tantrum after tantrum, I am literally the only parent ever between our team and any team that we play that constantly has to wrangle their child, um, and like Brian can't do anything because he's out there with the other kids, and when he tells her we're gonna do this exercise, or we're gonna be out in the field, or we're gonna, whatever it is, baseball related that they're doing you know she's not listening to him either now i understand why most of these places don't do t-ball before five because man it, it is a mess <coughs> my kid is a mess she doesn't listen it's just oh my god you guys i can't i can't even begin to tell you how frustrating it is but i'm there and we got put on like the official field the one that has like a real dugout so she kept going in between the dugout and where the other team was batting and i was like ryer you cannot be over there. Like, you are now putting yourself in a dangerous spot. Either get out into the field with the rest of your team or get back in the dugout. Stop going in between these two spaces because you're going to get hit by a bat, a ball, whatever. And the coach from the other team literally just said to me, he goes, could you not yell at her in front of these kids? I was fuming. I was like, what else am I supposed to do? This kid isn't listening. And I can't keep going from the sidelines, to the dugout, to the field. I'm not, I'm not a coach. I'm not supposed to be on the field with the kids. But my kid's not listening to anyone and she's putting herself in unsafe positions and nobody can do anything except for me. And I can't, and you guys, I am so glad that T-ball is almost over. I think we've got one practice scrimmage left of the season and that's it because I am, I am over it. I am tired of like, chasing her around and fighting with her. It's just, it's a mess. And I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know how she can be so much more well-behaved for ice skating than this. And ice skating she's been doing since she was three. Um, but I don't know. It is, maybe we're just not cut out for, like, youth team sports because it is, it is a mess. And um, it is so frustrating. Because it makes me look like I'm such a bad parent because I'm sitting out there yelling at my kid and I'm the only person yelling at my kid. But I'm yelling at my kid because she's not listening. Like, her entire team will be out in the field and she'll just be, like, floating around. <coughs> Excuse me. Or her team will be up to bat and she'll be, like, running in the mud. And I'm like, kid, I, I don't know how else to get you to understand this. And every week she tells us she wants to be a part of the team. She wants to do it, but then she doesn't ever do any of the team stuff. Um, but to tell you guys how hot it was when the uh, stuff was over, the other assistant coach had a bunch of popsicles in his bag for the kids, and it was 10 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> and it was funny, we were talking to my mom, and she's like, maybe the kids didn't want to be out there because it was so hot. And I was like, no kidding, they didn't want to be out there because it was hot. But that's not Briar's excuse. Briar's like that when it's not hot. Briar's out, when she first... Her first day in T-ball, she had, like, four layers on and she was still like that. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it's overwhelming. She's not really built for this at her age. Um, I have no doubt that if this is something she wants to do, we'll keep doing it. But, <coughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, my throat is on fire, you guys. It is so hot up here. And it is so dry in here. <sighs> like, I am immensely struggling over here um but we ended up going to there's a restaurant that does like a breakfast buffet um on our way home we've done it a couple times after t-ball it works out well because we have to be at t-ball at eight i think or eight thirty eight maybe it's eight i don't know and again it's not that close to our house so she's getting up super early and eating breakfast on the go and um by the time 10.30 rolls around, you know, she's, like, ready for another meal. 
Um, so it worked out. She did really well. She actually had a um, French toast and sausage. And when we were leaving, there was still some sausage on her plate. And she's like, Mommy, I want to take this. And I was like, go ahead. So she had her road sausage and she like shoved it in her mouth and ate it on the way home. It was the funniest thing. <coughs> Excuse me. But fortunately, while she was napping, and I say napping with air quotes here because she doesn't ever nap, um, I was able to get a bunch filmed. So keep your eyes peeled. There will be lots of new content um, coming. I filmed uh, another post review, um, a pen unboxing, a couple other things, and then I've got a bunch of actual like diamond painting unboxings still to film. I can only batch film so much at a time because I don't have a lot of memory on my phone. Um, but, you know, this is probably a good place to bid you all adieu. Um, again, I do apologize for a lot of the choppiness in this video, and <coughs> I tried not to cough in everybody's ear, but I know, I know it didn't work out very well. Um, I have been doing this thing with my daughter every single day, so I'm going to ask you guys the questions that we ask her every single day, and, um, I would love your responses down below. So, every day I ask her three questions. What was your favorite part of today? What was your least favorite part of today? And what are you looking forward to most? So, please, if you made it all the way to the end here, let me know your answers to those questions. Um, if you did make it, thank you so much. I know, um, I've been really lackluster on content recently, and I am starting to feel better mentally. So hopefully I'll get more stuff out for you guys in a pretty fast pace. That's the goal, you know, but I'm not going to set anything and then hold myself, uh, make myself feel sad if I don't accomplish it, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here because my throat is on fire. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time and I record my tiny human sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. <laughs>